Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part 13 on my VL Turbo project and we're gonna get straight into the clear coat. The clear I'm using is Chromax 696S Clear, formerly known as DuPont 696S, and I'm using Fast Harden with it. I've heated that clear up to around 45 degrees Celsius. That just helps me with my flash off times and it helps with runs because on this day it was probably only around 15 to 20 degrees Celsius ambient temperature and my spray booth does not have a heater function in it. Gun I'm using is the Starter Jet 5000 BRP with the 1.3 mil fluid tip on it. Great gun. The way I set this up is set with no regulator on it. I set it to about 1.3 bar on the gauge. It's got a digital gauge on it. Um, I've had some people say that they run this gun up to 2 bar. Now, I've tried. I've set the gun at 2 bar. I even had my mate from Devilbus come in the other day just to say g'day. And um, when he had a look at it, he said, oh, I'd like to have a look at that gun because I've never seen one, just out of interest. And I said, oh, there it is. And um, I said, look, there's, there's some people that say they run it at 2 bar. And I showed him the gun and I put a bit of thinners in it and showed him how it sprayed at 2 bar. And you, you're sort of losing the center of your spray fan. So um, maybe the HVLP would run okay at 2 bar. But personally, I find that's way too high. Um, you, you're probably over atomizing it, and you, you've got a hell. You would have a hell of a lot of excess paint wastage running at two bar. But hey, I'm not here to tell you guys what to do. If that works for you, well then go for it. But personally, I'll be running it a little bit lower than that. Say 1.3, even 1.4 is uh, just fine. And I've even ran this at 0.9 or even one bar and got some nice results out of it. The higher the pressure, you'll end up getting a much finer orange peel, but you'll sacrifice that in using more paint and more of that paint will be getting wasted and not hitting the panel. You'll also get less paint on the panel. You really just want to find that happy medium, which I find is around the 1.3 bar. The rest of the settings I'm using is full fan. I have made a mention to it in previous videos that with this gun, it's a little bit annoying where they put the um, fan control. It's right where my thumb naturally wants to sit. So if I wind that back a bit, I find myself knocking it with my thumb, as you can see here, when I've got it uh, set back a little bit, but it does spray well on full fan, so there really is no need to actually wind it back. And the fluid settings I've got set to three turns out. Heard some people say they set it up at two turns, but I find it just doesn't get quite enough pain out. So this 696S clear is a medium solids clear. I found it was actually working better for me in the warmer months when I didn't have to heat it up to help the coats dry in between coats and help stop the runs. So um, it's very thin when, as soon as you, it's already thin without putting thinners in it. So as soon as you put a bit of heat into it, it probably makes it even a little bit too thin. But I wanted to use it because I used the Chromax base coat and I knew that this was definitely 100% going to be compatible and I wouldn't have any adhesion issues down the track. Some colors are worse than others. Um, anything that's grainy, bluey, you really want to be using the correct clear for that base coat. I've seen it happen before in the past when we used to use some of that Wattle Spartan clear. It's probably one of the worst clears on the market. I'm glad it's not around anymore. But um, you would get real bad delamination. And sometimes you get those cars come in with the greens and people have just used a generic cheap panel clear over the top of whatever base coat they're using and you'll get that delamination and it uh, will not last as long. So this, this color here has got a bit of greeny blue tinge to it. So I really did want to make sure I used the correct clear coat to make sure I was going to get adhesion. It turned out that I did end up flow coating the entire car anyway, but over the top with the flow coat, that's when I used my top of the line Standox HS clear. And that is going to be the next video on this. Finally get up to flow coating the body of the car. So being that I heated the clear up, it actually made it so that I didn't even have to wait at all in between coats. I was also using the fast hardener, so that helped. Basically, by the time I got around the car, that was the, where, the spot where I started was ready to go straight away. So for the second coat, I did my edges first. So I did all that back panel. All that needs is one coat. It's all covered by the bumper bar. As long as it's just got one coat of clear over there, I was happy with it which is what you see me doing here. Thought I'd make a quick mention to something I uh, said in my last video, how I'm moving to Thailand. A few people have um, 
you know, shown a bit of interest in that and why I'm moving. Um, look, uh, I've wanted to move there for a long time and this is actually a perfect opportunity. I've got in contact with this um, guy. He was actually, he found my videos and he then went to the DNA Custom Paints training course and he's looking at getting that and some other really cool paints imported into Thailand. It's hopefully going to make this channel better, if anything. We've been getting in contact with PPJ over there. They said we're welcome to go and use their booth. We're gonna have our own spray center and we're gonna be doing some really cool stuff with some uh, Thai letters. I'll leave that at that for now. And and you guys can have a bit of a surprise when you start to see the kind of stuff that we're going to be able to achieve. And to be totally honest with you guys, even if I wasn't moving to Thailand, I still think I would be moving on from this workshop. Um, a few reasons, personal reasons, at the end of the day, I don't really believe that I uh, owe any of you guys a explanation as to why I'm leaving my shop. But I'm happy to tell you guys that it's, it's hard. It's very hard to make money in this industry. Um, by the time you pay your taxes and you pay your rent and you pay your power and you pay your insurance, there really doesn't leave much left behind to put in your own pocket. Um, I'm monetarily in exactly the same position I was 12 months ago, so I'm not really even going ahead. I've had a big uh, outlay in setting the business up and it's not really the best workshop, I'm not gonna lie. It's dusty, it's uh, messy, it's old. Um, I prefer to work in really state-of-the-art spray booths and equipment with really good top-line quality uh, paints and cars. Whereas we're sort of stuck here doing these big old uh, restoration jobs and there's really not that much money in it. We've actually been uh, recording our hours on some of those bigger jobs, and yeah, I get it for the customer. It's, it's a lot of money to go and spend 10 to 15, even $20,000 on a job, but it's there. The hours are there, you know? Um, hourly rate is lower on them than some of the uh, other stuff that we've been doing, like the smaller job. I guess it makes it a little bit harder for me because I am in the top tier of spray painters and I'm used to getting paid extremely well around $100,000 a year mark, say $45 an hour, super paid, all your taxes paid, and um, it's just a lot easier working for someone else. Yes, you get a bit more freedom, and to be honest, a big part of the reason why I even started this workshop was because of my YouTube channel, and it opened up uh, more opportunities to make different videos. I thought that my videos were getting very same, same uh, towards the end of last year, and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna get out there and give it a shot. Um, I kinda knew this was going to happen, so I'm not actually surprised at all, because, um, yeah, I know it's hard in this trade, but when you're getting fed the um, insurance work at a smash shop, a high flow smash shop, I can produce a lot of work, therefore I can demand top dollar. And when your rework level is extremely low, the boss will see that and they will be happy to pay you basically what you ask for. I reckon I could have asked them for an extra hundred bucks a week and they would have done it just to keep me. But that's okay, this is life, we move on. I've never in life regretted moving on from a workplace. When one door closes, another one opens and I doubt I'm going to regret leaving this workshop. Although I have had a great time here. It's just been good to have the extra freedom of being the boss, just being able to say, you know what, I'm having a week off and I'm gonna jump on the plane and go over to Thailand or just being able to sit down for two hours in the middle of the day because I can't be bothered working. But I do do sort of uh, 10 to 12 hour days on an average here at work and it seems like I'm working harder and getting less for it. But hopefully, when I get to Thailand, it's all gonna be a little bit different over there. It's gonna be slow to start off, obviously, but in time, hopefully, it's going to work out just fine. I also have an uncle over in Melbourne who owns a couple of big BMW dealerships, Doncaster BMW, and they've just opened up a big repair shop out there in Melbourne's northern suburbs and he's been getting on the phone to me and they even want me to go over there 
So that will be my contingency plan, I guess. If it all does uh, not work out there in Thailand, I will be coming back to Melbourne and working for him in his state-of-the-art BMW repair shop using Glazerit and floors that you could just about eat off with uh, top-of-the-line spray boost and everything. So as long as he lets me record videos, I'll be taking, I'll let him have me work for him. I'm actually also at the point where I'm ready to leave Perth. I've been here since 2012. It was only really intended on getting some work out there in the mines and then moving on But as it does to lots of people it seems to uh, trap some people here and um, My friends and my best friends and all my family live over in Melbourne So that is where I want to be spending more of my free time rather than uh, Perth and then always going to Thailand because I want to see my girlfriend over there who is totally awesome and looks after me the best, uh, cooks me the best Thai food and I really don't have to do that much around the house which is a bonus, it gives me more time to edit the videos up. If any of you guys ever do make it over to Thailand be sure to hit me up on your holiday, come over and we can do a bit of training together at my spray center. Once we're set up that would be totally cool. We're going to be located quite central in Bangkok and that that is a very good area for us as far as business goes because it's a good central area to all of Southeast Asia. So as far as the distribution side of things goes, um, it's geographically a good area as well. The guy is a Canadian guy that I'm going to be partnering up with and he's very enthusiastic just about paint in general. He likes the whole technology side and loves all the custom side of paint, which is great because it's something that in this workshop here, I find myself not doing as much of the custom stuff as I would really like to because we're forced to just get in and do all this smash and restoration work Whereas I would really like to spend a lot more time uh, doing some more creative stuff, I guess, and just have a bit of fun trying some new stuff. Well, there you go. Thanks for listening to my rant there, guys. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. hope I haven't bored you guys too much with it. But I do know that there are some people out there that are interested in a little bit more than just the paintwork I do. So you can watch my paintwork and listen to a bit of a story at the same time. So we'll just finish the video off with our last coat of clear over the boot lid which yes I know there's dust all through it but that is just the positioning of that in the booth so the way that my booth works as I have mentioned in a few previous videos is that it comes in um, up that end so forward of me and it comes out behind me of screen at the moment and when I'm painting the body of the car all of that overspray has been landing on this boot lid here and that overspray has contaminated it obviously balled up and turned into uh, lots of little bits of crap on the panel but I was quite aware this was going to happen knowing that it was going to get flow coated it really didn't bother me um, how do I have just been going to paint this the one time just a normal everyday uh, paint job I probably would have tried to get this up the other end of the booth underneath the fan I've also made sure I put the water down on the floor that does definitely make a big difference in this spray booth uh, because any of the overspray that does hit the uh, floor will not come back up in and then turn into dust on your panel it'll hit that water the water will catch it and it'll stay down I've also got my booth coating on the walls which is a sticky coating that will also do the same thing that'll just grab your overspray rather than having it bounce off the gloss finish that you'll have if you just paint it with say some two pack or some just quick dry enamel but anyway here's a quick look at the beautiful Sata Jet 5000B I really do love this gun it pumps out an amazing amount of paint and to be honest it's it's a 1.3 but it really feels like a 1.4 so for apprentices or anyone who's just a bit worried about getting runs if you are looking at getting one of these guns maybe just look at getting the 1.2 especially if you're in a colder climate I have got some killer runs with this thing especially the first couple of times I used it I even had a video on the how to fix paint defects it was a bonnet that I did on a BA Falcon and um, yeah got some killer runs in that but it's okay, I've sussed it out and I've got some settings which is by raising that pressure up. So I was running it around 0.91 bar, which as I mentioned at the start, you'll get more fluid on there and a little bit less overspray. It had also started cooling down at that point 
so I was not only new to the gun, but I'd also forgotten about that warm up that clear trick because it had been quite a while since I'd had to use it. But once I remembered to warm that clear up, adjusted those settings again, I've been able to get some really good results with it and totally loving it. Massive fan on it, pumps out heaps of paint. But there you go, there is a lot of dust in that boot lid. The rest of the car I was really happy with. Um, it was a big day here. I think it was around a 10 hour day on a Sunday. No one wants to be working on a Sunday, but when you can get to do stuff, Stuff like this on a Sunday well it's not so bad is it when you're spending all that time working on other people's cars most of the time you never really even get the chance to do your own car so I just said you know what I'm gonna do it and Saturday and Sunday got this thing re-sprayed in two days hang around right to the end there's a couple of links that you can click on to the other videos if you're watching on a mobile device click that little eye icon in the top right you can also view my other channel which is the gunman raw all totally unedited raw footage and check the links in the description below if you want to check out my Facebook page and all my other social media. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed watching this video. Always leave comments and questions in the section below. Just because I don't answer you doesn't mean I haven't read it. I may even get back to your question in a following video. I do apologize to some people that send some really long questions. I'm sorry, I barely even have enough time to read those three page essays, let alone answer them all. But hey, once I'm in Thailand, hopefully I'll have more time to answer stuff like that. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman Production. Goodbye.